Welcome to another soccer down here 1v1. Still part of our virtual brewery tour, but this is a different kind of stop today. This is a, a very different aspect of the Georgia and honestly American craft beer industry. We are talking about bottle share today. If you haven't heard about Bottle Share, you're going to learn a lot about a really cool nonprofit that's doing a lot to benefit people in the craft beer and wine and cider industries. Christopher Glenn founded Bottle Share, and he's going to give us the the 411 on how everything got going. Christopher, thanks for the time today. I appreciate it. My man, absolutely. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm excited. Give us the the rundown on how everything got started. I know it's a pretty unique story that that led you to start Bottle Share and, and try to help the an industry that's dear to your heart. Yeah, for sure. So, first off, man, I, I want to say thank you so much for uh, taking the time to have me on the show today. I greatly appreciate it, and any opportunity that I have to to spread awareness and share the word and and. Um, you know, create some some awareness around what we're trying to do is a huge uh, uh, step in the right direction. So I greatly appreciate it. Um, man, the story, holy smokes. A, a, a January 6th of 2018, uh, I was the bar manager for a local brewery in Kennesaw, Georgia called uh, Dry County Brewing Company. It was a, like a Friday night and you know, it was a late night, so we were closed down at about midnight. Had to close everything up. You know, count, count the cash and do all, delegate all of the uh, the closing duties. And having a great night, made it through. I was super hungry, so I stopped off at another place that was still open. Got some uh, some chicken wings to go, and hopped in hopped in my jeep. And I uh, circled back around. Uh, about jeeps because uh, that, that did save my life but um hopped in the jeep started heading on home got off the highway i was sitting at the light on the off ramp going to turn left to cross back over the highway to get, get to my house which is just about a mile away from there and uh i was just sitting there waiting for the light to turn green and the next thing i know uh i'm i'm coming to there's a massive ringing in my head. It feels like a bomb went off inside the Jeep. I have no idea what happened. I feel like I came out of a washing machine. I couldn't tell up from down, uh, up from down and left, right. I, was, I stumbled out of the, the, the Jeep itself. I still didn't understand what was happening. I was very confused, disoriented, uh, a lot of noise, very weird smells. It, it was just a, a, a crazy um, uh, experience. And there's such, so few things that I actually remember of the hit, uh, but they're all in like little pictures. You know, it's not like a mm -hmm. video where I, I remember the whole thing. I could see and replay the entire thing. It's just these pictures show up. Um, so all, all, it's the most that, that I can tell you really is calling 911. And I remember the guy had kind of fallen out of the, his truck it was a full-size chevy silverado he was drunk as hell he passed out on the highway it came flying on onto the on, uh, off ramp and hit me at about 60 miles an hour mm. and i wound up suffering from a, a really severe traumatic brain injury uh, atrophy in three regions of my brain uh, essentially that means my brain weighs less now than it did before the accident it's kind of the easiest way to describe that uh i was a veg man for like six months then for that full year uh it was also just an absolute battle of uh, what am i going to do with my life you know um I, I had always been so motivated and excited you know love and life it was the first time that i'd experienced anything like anxiety and depression and, and all of these mental health issues that people face every single day. It's like, I got a taste of their world uh, and, and it's so sad. So that, you know, mental health issues is something that's very important to me, something that we're actually going to be implementing into the nonprofit in the future uh, because of my experience with that. Uh, but to get back to the accident, that's, that's, that's essentially what happened. I wound up in the hospital the next day I fought um, and, and, and it just, it, it 
changed my life in 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 a moment you know right and coming out of that you know you had been in the industry uh how did how did you guys kind of figure out the next steps as you started to you know get back on your feet literally and, and figure out what you wanted to do certainly so at that time uh, i was unable to provide for myself i i you know, I was completely, on a, I was 100% dependent and reliant upon those around me, not just financially, but, you know, of course, monetarily, but shelter, food, mm-hmm. my bills, transportation, you know, to my doctor's appointments. Man, I had like seven doctors. Uh, everybody was always doing, always, always having to do things for me. And if it, at the time, it made me feel bad, but, you know, uh, looking back at it, I, I Obviously, I needed it, and if I didn't have it, I'd either be homeless or dead. Those are really the only two logical uh, alternate scenarios. Mm-hmm. So thanks to them, it, it sparked something inside of me um, to do something bigger than myself. And Trey Sinclair, who is the owner of Dry County Brewing Company, the brewery that I work for, he said I'd always thought about uh, this, uh, uh, having a nonprofit organization in the craft craft beverage industry, so there's there's not one. He said, but I run a brewery. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have the time or the resources to pursue anything like that. So, what do you think? And man, I tell you what that that was that was a life changing moment for me. Uh, that was about the same time that we Dry County myself. And the rideshare company Lyft had done a Lyft initiative promo video. And I was still really bad at that point. I was shaking, tremoring so hard. I could hardly speak. Uh, it was a very emotional experience for me. Once we were done, it, you see at the end of the video, Trey and I, you know, give each other a hug and, and I start bawling, uh, just because of the situation. But, uh, Man, I tell you what, I cried for so long after that. It's just a puddle, dude. And and all of these things were happening at, at the same time. The Lift Initiative video uh, garnered so much positive response from so many people. I think we got like sixty something thousand views and hundreds of thousands of uh, engagement. And uh, uh, it, it was all positive. You know, it was the first time that I had felt any positivity in my life since since the wreck, and that had been coming up on a year. And I took, you know, I, I, it was, it was like a recharging of my batteries, but my batteries became bigger, better, stronger, and, and last longer because I now have my purpose in life, right? For years, for years and years, I, I, I was always searching for my purpose, but I found that it's actually your purpose to find you. You just have to be open to it. You have to see the signs. You have to recognize them and you have to be reliant upon them and believe that they're guiding you in the right direction and on the right path. And, and I tell you what, it, I made these signs just keep popping up and, and, and I just keep marching forward and it's, it's blindly uh, marching forward and just knowing that what we're doing is the right thing. And, and uh, it's, it, it's, it's out of this world. I couldn't imagine uh, living a happier life in doing something like this and, and giving back to others because so many people gave to me in my time of need. When you started to kind of narrow down like what the mission would be, and let's just start with the name. Let's start with Bottle Share. You know, how did that idea come up to call it Bottle Share and nail down what part of good you wanted to bring into the world? Certainly. Uh, so Trey had called it the bottle share the bottle share like three separate words and so that's what i went with so the original logo our og logo which which is funny because we just we have a like a a a flash sale going on right now with the original logo on our t-shirt it's just for a limited time and then 100 percent of those proceeds are going to be donated back into the believe in beer relief fund Uh, so we're getting a bunch of those which is awesome uh, and it says the bottle share and it's our old logo. And, um, 
you know, through through the process. And, and the reason it's called model share is because, first off, the keyword there is share. Uh, secondly, in the craft beverage industry, obviously, it, it's uh, a, a, a very unique part of the culture where people get together and everybody brings a different bottle and everybody's got their glass and you pass the bottles around and you share the beer and you have a good time and you meet new friends and, and, and build better relationships with the ones that you do have. And it's, it's awesome. You know, it's a wonderful experience and it really, it really sh- uh, shines the light on what this community and what this industry is really all about. It's, it's brotherhood and it's, it's camaraderie, it's community. And, um, and so bottle share was the perfect, you know, title uh, for what we were what we were trying to do, uh, and the movement that we want to create. Um, so that made just perfect sense. And then once we started talking about the mission, um, at first, quite frankly, man, I didn't know what the hell the mission was. I, I didn't have a mission statement. Uh, all of this has. Everything that has happened is a result of just going out and doing. Uh, I tell people all the time, I still don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I'm learning along the way, right? Uh, and, and and it was the same situation with when we got Bottle Share started. It, the mission now is, you know, we are a, a fund generating and fund distribution 501c3 uh, a corporation that is geared specifically toward the craft beverage industry. So when I say craft beverage, it's craft beer, wine, spirits. Okay. Um, and, and, and what we're doing is, is we raise money so that when people experience extreme hardships outside of the workplace, preventing them from working and earning an income to provide them for, to provide for themselves and their families, uh, that's where we step in. Uh, they, what we want to do is is not just help them financially, uh, but provide hope in their lives as well through sharing our stories and the stories of, of others that have have benefited from Bottle Share. Um, so that's that's become our mission, and, and and that's exactly what we're doing. That's an amazing organization. I mean, I worked in a nonprofit called Soccer in the Streets and and did development, and I know how difficult you know it can be going about fundraising going about a a marketing plan and and like you said i mean just nailing down what your mission statement is you know i was the same way i didn't know what a mission statement was for a nonprofit until you start having to define what you want to do and and you guys are doing so much how do how do people who do need help what is the process for trying to get help from bottle share certainly man so we've we've made it so easy uh all all anybody has to do is is you know a a craft beverage industry uh, employee or worker um hops on our website follows the grant links right they submit an application then based on that application uh or they submit uh, a survey Based on the responses from that survey are how we determine, uh, first off, if you're qualified or if you're not qualified. And then secondly, if you are, here are the next steps. And we send you over a, an application so that we kind of get to know you better. We understand what your financial situation is looking like. And then from there, based on a grading system on our back end, uh, we, we, we then proceed to write out checks, uh, grants, obviously, right. um, you know, to, to, to the people in need. So at first, when we, the business model was really at, at first just to get our feet under us and, and make sure that we knew what we were doing moving forward, we were going to do one quarterly grant for $5,000. Um, and the reason that I wanted to do that is because you know, $5,000 can change somebody's life. Yeah. Right. Um, especially if you're not, if, especially if you're not, if you don't have an income, um, I feel like even five thousand dollars could even change somebody's life that does, you know. So mm-hmm. I wanted to do that four of them throughout the year, and then double it, double that the year following, and, and continue to do so. Uh, but 
once this COVID-19 pandemic hit, it's either sink or swim, right? right. Uh, and so we had to pivot. It, it, I tell you what, when it first started happening and it was getting really bad, we were right in the middle of releasing, we're about to release a huge charity beer uh, collaboration between Sprayberry Bottle Shop in Marietta, uh, shout out to Bridge, uh, Variant Brewing out in Roswell, and Reformation Brewing from the Woodstock Canton area. Mm-hmm. And then the proceeds from that beer, we're going to go back to Bottle Share. It was like a, it was a pineapple milkshake IPA. A lot of people said it tasted like a pina colada. Oh wow! Uh, it, yeah, it was delicious. It was called Drink Well with Others, uh, and it had a big old pineapple with some sunglasses uh, on the front label. It was a killer beer. It was absolutely delicious. But it it, it was being released in the middle of a freaking pandemic, right? Uh, when, yeah. When breweries and restaurants didn't even know what to do. You know, they, they had to get creative. They, okay, cool. If people can come in, we're going to take it outside, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a shortage of hand sanitizer. Let's make some. Yeah. And, uh, people can't get there or don't want to drive out to get their food. We're going to deliver it to them. These people, this community fought, man. They fought. They battled. They, the grind was real. They hustled. They were creative, they were uh, innovative, and, and they, they had to pivot their business model at the drop of a dime, and they did it. So many of them did it successfully. It's amazing. And they've been able to hang on up through this point. And it looks like they're, a lot of them are going to continue to hang on. And they're, they're not doing as bad as, as we thought they were going to at first, which is amazing. And it's a true testament to – to these individuals that are out there working, hustling, grinding, and doing everything that they can to continue their passion, continue what they're doing, hold on to their business, feed their family, write checks to their employees, right? And, and it's inspiring. And so for, I don't know, maybe maybe the first two minutes that it dawned on me that this was going to be a pandemic, I was like, wow, this is going to get really slow. Oh, boy. But then I said, nope. We're, we're, now is the time to run harder than you've ever ran, right? So yeah. had that mentality, my uh, director of marketing and business development, uh, Crystal, is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and she and I put our, put our heads together and came up and pivoted, changed up the business model. So now what we're doing is instead of, quarterly grants for 5,000, we broke it down into what we call them the, our new micro grant program. So now we can help more people. You know, if you don't have an income, if you have nothing coming in, 250 bucks, that's, that, man, that's awesome. Yeah. You don't, if you don't have an income uh, and you're struggling with 500 bucks, dang, ah, I'll take it. A thousand dollars even. So what we did with the micro grant program was based on need, uh, and through the through our grading process, and we would write out either two fifty, five hundred, or thousand dollar grants, and then send them out. So that's what we were doing, man. Then the next thing I know, man, the National Brewers Association contacts us, and uh, boom, boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean. To be a young nonprofit, anyway, it's hard because you're you're figuring things out as you go. You're you're figuring out you know how to help people, and you guys have it on on both sides where you're figuring out how to get money to people, but you've got to raise money along the way to be able to get money to people. And then in the midst of something none of us have experienced, you have to pivot and figure it out. Um. One thing that has blown me away doing these, because this idea started uh, from Scott Flood and the Flood Project of doing Soccer Down Here (laughs) shows. Yeah, Scott. Scott's been awesome with us, and he's had to pivot because we talked about doing live Soccer Down Here shows, talking soccer at breweries, because the soccer community, the 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 craft beer community here in Georgia, there's so much overlap. There there's so much back and forth. There's, they're both based on community. There there's so much that they share, and when we couldn't 
do it because of this. And we had to find a way it, it made sense to tell these stories about how different breweries are keeping people employed about the, like you said, pivoting to making hand sanitizer, pivoting to, you know, offering to go sales stuff that you would have never thought of before. What's the, the one thing that maybe has surprised you the most during this, that, you know, you're, you're just proud of the work that you guys are doing and proud of the industry as a whole for helping the people in it. Yeah, that's such a good question. It, I think up until maybe two days ago before this happened, uh, you know, I, I could have rambled on for an hour, and I still could. Yeah. But something just absolutely amazing happened, and it was in, I'll say it again, it's just an absolute true testament to this incredible community. We contacted one of the breweries, that had, I mean, we, we received almost 800 applications for oh, wow. brewery assistance through this. And we contacted one of the breweries to let them know that they are qualified. Here's the next steps. They, this is, this is how cool this is. They, they emailed us back and said, we're in a much better place than we thought we were going to be. Uh, we're hanging on. It might be by a thread, but we're still hanging on and things are looking good save this money that you would give to me and pass it over to somebody else that needs more help. That's awesome. Right. I mean, that, and that's one of the first responses that we got after sending out the email to notify breweries across the country that they've qualified for these grants. And for one of the very first replies to be something like that, that is profound to me, you know, and, and that's what, dude, that's, that's what it's all about. That's, that's, that's the character of this community and why it's such a privilege and an honor to be able to do what I do, but in this industry, this specific industry, uh, running, a, I'm sure running a nonprofit in any, any form or fashion for any industry, any community, whatever it is, you're just as passionate about it as I am. But damn, <laughs> I, I just, I, I feel blessed. I feel lucky. I'm so thankful to be alive. You know, uh, every day is the best day of my life. And, and, uh, I, I couldn't imagine, uh, living a happier life. There's no way that I could ever do anything else. This is what I'm going to do until the day that I die. I always say that the only force that's strong enough, uh, to stop me from continuing to pursue what I know bottle share is and will be is my final breath. And that's it. There's a lot of a lot of work to do right now, and people who are listening to this and learning about Bottle Share, how can they help? How can they make a donation? How can they get money to you to get to people who need it? Certainly. So, any any craft beverage enthusiast across the country has the opportunity to donate through our website, which is www thebottleshare.org there's a donate button up top uh, you can do a one time donation you can go over to our Facebook page and, and make a donation through there that even gives you the opportunity to donate to lock in like 10 bucks a month say instead of giving us 100 bucks at once or five, 50 bucks at once we, we, would, we would love to build a, 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 a form of revenue through something like that where it's just 10 bucks a month, you know, mm -hmm. everybody throws in 10 bucks a month. Um, so there's, there's, there's that way. That's, that's, that's a great way for the, uh, craft beer enthusiasts to help. Also talk about us, man, share our stuff. Uh, let people know. It doesn't matter if you're in the, in the brewery or in the beverage craft beverage community or not. Uh, you can always share, you can like, you can post, you can talk to people about us. Uh, the more awareness that that's to me, that's the most important thing is, you know, there's there's a lot of people out there that don't know about us. They don't know who we are yet. And say somebody gets injured or somebody gets sick, or somebody loses a spouse, you know, and this resource was there for them, but they just didn't know. Mm -hmm. I hate that. That's a missed opportunity. What's the worst kind of opportunity? Missed opportunity, right? And and, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. So, so the awareness, spreading the awareness is very important. Uh, breweries... We can do collaborations. We can do charity beers. Uh, we 
we can get together, have big events. Uh, you know, obviously, once the COVID situation has calmed down and we're allowed to gather together again. Um, there's also uh, what we call and here's here's my thing. This, to me, this is the most important part of what we're trying to do monetarily is Bottle Share Collective. So Bottle Share Collective is the most important thing to me right now, period. And the reason being is because what we've just experienced, what we're currently still experiencing. I want to be as proactive as I possibly can. I don't want to be reactive. And unfortunately, we were forced into a position through this pandemic to where we had to be reactive. What's the most important thing here? Learning learning from this experience. And so I want to learn from this experience. And that's why Bottle Share Collective is so important. So that in the future, if something like this ever does happen, or even down to a single employee, it doesn't even have to be a tragedy. We want to cover it all. And we want to have the funds ready and available to go right now, you know, at the drop of a dime. And that's why Bottle Share, uh, Bottle Share Collective is so important. So what it is, is it's a mutual aid initiative. For thousands of years, communities, small communities and pockets of, of communities across the world, across the globe, come together and they pile their money together so that in the event that somebody experiences something horrible or tragic and it costs money, it's there. It's readily available. That's what Bottle Share Collective is. So it's $50 a month to become a member of Bottle Share Collective. We pile that money into one account. And in the event that one of your uh, employees or staff or workers experiences an extreme hardship outside of the workplace, preventing them from working and earning an income for themselves or their families, we are there for them, right? You have a, uh, a fundraising event, we'll come up and match it up to $2,500. So if you raise $2,500, bucks, we are picking in another $2,500, and your employee now has, now has $5,000, that they didn't have prior to then. We want to help. We want to do these things. And so that's that's why Bottle Share uh, Collective is important to the employee, the worker. Now we're going to do the same exact thing to any brewery out there as well because we want to make sure that the breweries are taken care of also. If we don't have the breweries, we don't have the employees, right? So we got to make sure to take care of these guys also. So in the event that a brewery itself experiences an extreme hardship, for example, we worked with Muddy Creek Brewery out in uh, Montana. Their whole facility burnt to the ground, everything. Nothing was salvageable. We helped raise funds for them. Now we're going to do the same thing for any brewery across the country that joins into this mutual aid initiative, anything at all, and we're going to come on, we're going to write you a grant check for $5,000. So $2,500 to your employees, $5,000 to your uh, uh, breweries, and, and that works for anybody that is a part of the membership program. That's just the, the level of different ways you help is what's impressed me so much is it's not just, you know, helping employees who need it's helping breweries. It's finding new ways to help as new needs emerge. How can everybody follow you guys so they can spread that word out there? Certainly. So all of our, uh, social media platforms are at Bottle Share Official, except for Twitter. Twitter is uh, at Bottle Share One, the number one. Uh, we're trying to be as active as possible on all three. As a matter of fact, we're super active on all three. It's an it's an adventure, you know. And, and, <laughs> social media for you. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so, I had a friend tell me I, I need to make a T-shirt out of this the other day, but uh, man, I want Bottle Share to be the most badass nonprofit on the planet. Uh, I, I want people to recognize the brand. I want people to understand that we're here. We're not here to, 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 to mourn tragedy. We're here to celebrate life, right? Uh, and, and I empathize with everybody, anybody that's going through anything tragic, man, I, I, I feel that on a, a level that is overwhelming sometimes, especially now after the accident, having been through so many challenges of my own. Uh, but what can we do to help? What, what can we do to fix it? And that's what we're focused on. And, and not only that, but we're also focused on, on this community itself. The things that make it so incredible, the camaraderie, the love, the community, right? It's, it's just amazing 
and, and, and we want to showcase that. We want to highlight that and we want to amplify that. This has been awesome because this is, uh, you know, I've been in the nonprofit industry. This is a nonprofit that, you know, I didn't know. And this is an industry that I'm getting to know and, and one that is very important, I think, in society today. I mean, we all like to have a drink and get together with friends and talk. And we've all been missing that right now. And people in the industry need help, and you're in a position with what you're doing with Bottle Share to help people, and we want to help you help people. So, you know, people out there listening, when we have soccer down here events, we're going to find ways to tie Bottle Share into it. You know, I want to spread the word. We're going to find ways to to amplify what you're doing because, I mean, what you're doing is not just needed; it's essential and it's incredibly impactful. So, just Thank you for being you, and thank you for for hanging out with us and telling us, you know, about Bottle Share. That's uh, that that's so awesome. Your 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 words are so kind, brother, and and, and the the feeling is mutual and reciprocated. I, I I thank you very much for having me. Seriously.